a crazy day. Today is a very intense day, a lot of spiritual warfare going on. And uh, I'm not gonna say I'm not a little nervous about what we're about to do. God put it on our heart to come to uh, Washington, D.C. in advance of the inauguration of Joe Biden. I think all of us here had uh, felt it very strongly pressed upon our heart that we were going to preach the gospel, but I had a special mission to preach in sackcloth, just as I have before, uh, and to proclaim Jesus and repentance to the nation. Repent, United States of America! Jesus Christ is coming soon! Look at what the hand of the Lord hath brought! Darkness has covered our lands! We have all gone astray, and Jesus is calling us home! Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let us turn to the Lord and he will have mercy and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Jesus Christ is King of glory and he will give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He will lift you up and give you life. Your government will not save you, my friends. Jesus Christ brings an eternal kingdom. He brings a kingdom that's not of this world. There is only one name under heaven given unto men whereby we can be saved. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Repent for the kingdom of God has come near to you. Choose to stay or you will serve. My friends, our government has gone into corruption. We have worshipped in darkness and Jesus wants to bring us into the light. But we as a country must humble ourselves before God so he can lift us up. It doesn't matter what government we're under. Trump, Biden, they will not save you. Jesus is the one who saves. Jesus is the one who heals. Jesus is the one who delivers. He is the great physician. He is the great I am. He is King of glory. There is only one name that will give you the life that you are looking for. My friends, the time is now. We are running out of time. Now is the time to repent. Now is the time. Hear the voice of what crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be exalted. Let every mountain and high hill be made low. Let the crooked places be made straight and the rough places plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and our lives will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. We are in the end times and God will bring judgment to this country it is too late. We will seek repentance and it will escape us. We had a chance and we failed. We love our sin, America. We have forsaken the ways of God and gone after the ways of Baal. We're sacrificing our babies. The blood of the innocent being spilled by the multitudes. Do you see the evil in our society? Do you understand what is happening? Our corruption has eaten us up. Our children are disappearing by the multitudes. Our children are being bought and sold. The blood being spilled. Wake up, America. Wake up, the time is late. The night is far spent. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Do you understand the urgency that we are in? What does it profit if we gain the world and yet lose our soul? Jesus Christ died for your sins. On the third day he rose from the dead. He's coming back. He will save you. Confess with your mouth that he is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you can be saved. And right as we began to preach, the presidential motorcade drives through. And for that, for us, that was the, the tone setter for the day. That was us saying, you know what? 
God has put us here, perfect time. And what are the odds that we were going to be in that place at that time, preaching the gospel, and we even saw the first lady or uh, the vice president, she was waving through the, the car while we were preaching about Jesus. And man, overwhelming, overwhelming to know that we could have been two blocks over, we could have been five minutes late, could have been five minutes early. But in that moment, where just as we go to preach on just a random block that we had chosen, God had already foreordained for us to be there. Bro, that's how you know that we, we had no idea that they were gonna come through. I had, I had an inkling, I had an inkling, because what we were doing, uh, they were saying like, hey, I'm gonna need you to stay back, right? But we didn't plan to start at a certain time. We got, we were ready. We knew we were going to preach here this morning. We were ready. We started preaching and then they brought the motorcade through. And I'm pretty sure they heard us preaching about Jesus. So that to us was the confirmation, the confidence that we needed to carry us through the rest of the day. And that's how we know God has perfect timing. We're in obedience, but being faithful to what God has asked of us. And he positions us to speak for the nation, to speak for him to the nation. And, uh, and, and Man, well, only God knows what's gonna become of this, but I believe when we obey God and we're doing declarations like this, switches are flipped, buttons are pressed, spiritually, things are happening. Things are being released, things are being brought into completion. We don't know what's gonna become of this. We have faith, we keep obeying the Lord, we're gonna to go to the next place, and we'll see what God does, you know? Hopefully, there's still mercy for us as a nation. A sister in Christ, she came from Tennessee, and she felt that the Lord was telling her to also put on sackcloth, and she brought ashes with her. Today, I had my backpack, I had sackcloth in there, I had my Bible, I had a little bit of emergency medical supplies, you know, just as a, as a medic, as an EMT. I didn't know what was gonna happen today. And when I was trying to meet up with, with Torch of Christ Ministries team, I had to go through a TSA security checkpoint, and they went through my entire backpack and they're like, what is this? What, you know, like, what is in the bag? What, what's going on? And I told them, you know, we're, you know, we're a ministry and we're here on a mission to, uh, to call for repentance for our nation. It was, it was interesting while they were going through my bag. I'm, you just, any opportunity to give a testimony is, it, God is not gonna return that void. So shared a little bit of testimony with them while they're going through my things, explained to them what sackcloth and ashes was about, and everything was good. No problems there. And our plan was to be in front of the Capitol building uh, right at noon when Joe Biden would begin his inaugural address. And we were gonna go out in sackcloth. Uh, we're gonna live stream uh, and preach just the message that God had put on our heart. It was kind of, there was definitely, you could feel the spirit moving um, as we were walking. And, you know, I, I was thinking about my own sins and um, you know, I was thinking about the sins of our nation and I was thinking about how our churches have turned away from, from the path, you know, they've, they're too busy being caught up in the world. And Jesus says, be in the world, but not of it. Because we, as most people know, if you're a Christian, you know that we have turned away from the ways of God. And we are so caught up in all the stuff going on around us. There's a really strong spirit of fear. So as we were preparing for this, we had everybody get in place, kind of knew what they were doing. And we're standing around and I just felt like God told me to go ahead and put on my sackcloth. Um, I already felt like crying just because of the heaviness of our sin and uh, the lack of repentance. Christina had put on her sackcloth. She got all the ashes. This is where it got a little bit crazy. And so I put on my sackcloth. I got out my ashes. And, um, you know, I just started just putting them, rubbing them on my hands, rubbing them on my face. I sat down on the sidewalk. Um, Brother Philip, he put on his sackcloth, and he um, he started putting the the ashes, you know, on his head, and 
it was blowing. It was, it was, you know, it was blowing on me, and it just, you know, just, I could just, it was such a powerful moment, continuing to be more and more powerful. It was like building up. He put on the sackcloth, he started um, putting the ashes on, and I'm sitting there just kind of meditating with God, you know, praying both internally and, you know, externally. We, I took the ashes out of my hand, or out of the bag, put it in my hand, and I started just pouring it all over my head, rubbing it on my head. I'm preparing. We still had 10 minutes to go before we were even gonna start. But as I prepared to walk out into the street so that we could get a thumbnail for the live feed, we were immediately surrounded by Capitol Police, secret agents, I don't even know, police officers, uh, military, I just, I got lost in the shuffle, but immediately we had several police officers tell me, don't move. Stay right there. I'm just gonna move on Okay, okay, okay. Stay right there, buddy. Okay. Stay right there, stay right there. Get it. This is stay right there. Don't move your head, don't move. Don't do anything, don't move. We're just preaching the gospel. Stay there. Okay. Don't move. Take your cap. Move your cap. Move back. And all of a sudden, the um, the police or the military, I don't know, people with guns um, started surrounding us. They started telling everyone to get back. They started pushing everyone that was around us, um, including you know members of our team, uh, like a block, block and a half away. The um, they evacuated the area. Um, Brother Philip also he, you know he started preaching and um, it started getting very uh, scary. You know, my flesh was already struggling with the idea of doing sackcloth and ashes. And then in that moment, it was just, boom, you know, all of this um, hostility, spiritual hostility. They, they moved um, the troops that were around the area back. Um, I didn't know what was going on, but I just, I just kept praying. I kept my hands up. Um, I started crying. And it, it wasn't just fear that was making me cry, but I was, you know, I was already in that state of mind um, with regards to sin and repentance and just that we are just humbling myself before God. Um, this is not a time to be celebrating and joyful. This is a time of mourning. We've got very, very dark days upon us. And I think moving forward, we're gonna have dark days. So I'm just sitting there praying. Um, brother Philip started preaching. There was one, there was one brother, I don't know his name. Um, we just, we had just met him. His name was Jorge. And for some reason, um, you know, they're pushing everyone else away. They allowed him to stay. And he was standing right behind me. And you know, I said, I said, I'm scared. And he was like, don't worry, sister. You know, God's here with us. Just keep preaching, keep praying. And I, I really feel like God allowed him to stay there to encourage both me and Brother Philip in that moment because Brother Philip was terrified as well. The Bible says that we were about to give your mouth to Jesus the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved. Today is the day of salvation. Preach, bro, preach. Preach. Forgive us, Father. Don't quit, bro. Crowd your spirit, Father. No, no, no. Oh, my goodness. Go for it, bro. Go for it. The spirit of God is in you, bro. Just do it. Now is the time, brother. My friends, we have to humble ourselves. Yes. We call upon the name of Jesus. Jesus. You are our Savior, Lord. Yes. Pour out your spirit, Father. I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if we were going to die. I didn't know if we were going to get arrested. But if we did, I would just, we needed to proclaim this message that God had put in our hearts boldly. If not now, when? Keep filming if you want. In the Bible, it talks about sackcloth and ashes. Sir, 
Back up. Back up. Give us some room. Back up. Back up. Keep backing up. And they began to clear the area, and I believe they cleared it a block, and then eventually cleared it back another block. So two blocks of clearance, and we had this huge ordeal go down where I think everybody thought I was there with a bomb. Uh, suicide vest uh, underneath my sackcloth, I don't know. So there was a lot of fear uh, on everybody's side, and, and I'll be the first to tell you it's humbling when you go through an experience like that. I would like to think that in the moments that we face death, we face the prospect of death, the idea of death, that we can be strong in our faith and you know, stand firm and, and that's where we really see our faith come to the forefront and I truly have faith in God and I trust in Him and I believe in His plan for my life and I know God had sent me to that intersection to preach Jesus. I got scared. I saw life in front of me. And I began to pray and I said, God, I know you sent me here, but you didn't tell me if I was going to live or die. Go pray, bro. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Right. Repent for the kingdom of God has come near to you. That's right. We must humble ourselves and pray. That's right. In the Bible, it talks about humbling yourself before God in sackcloth and ashes. That's all this is. It's an outward demonstration of our humility before God. We come in peace, all right? We are real Christians. We're not about violence or rioting. We're not about rebelling against government. We're about praying for our nation so we can see true change. Because Jesus Christ loves us, but we have rebelled and we have gone against his ways. Right. We have turned against the ways of God. Choose this day who you will serve, my friends. I bless the police back up. here. I bless the back military. Up. I was in the Marine Corps. I'm not an extremist. I'm a Christian who loves Jesus. Sir, that is all. Back up. If there is one message back I can up. share with you today, is that back we up. should not love our life. This hey, life. We're going to have to get them to take their we items if we're going to push them back. We are here for a moment. Do not go past here. One day we are gone. From the flesh we can't. From the dust cool? we came to the dust we return. I have no idea whose items you are. Gentlemen, Jesus loves you. Police, military, Jesus loves you. That is the goal here. It is to promote nothing else but Jesus Christ, King of glory. That we must repent for the sins of the nation. Today is the day when America turns its back on Christianity. Christians, it will never be the same for you in America again. Already we see recently they're changing how they do things in Congress, get rid of personal pronouns. I think there was one gentleman closed out the, the segment uh, of their meeting with a man and a woman, a man that had nothing to do with you know gender. So we see this change already. We now have a government that's fully controlled uh, by the left, and not just by the moderate left, but by a far left. And they have an agenda that's not from God. That is just the truth. So we came here to preach about a return to the Lord. God puts us in places in divine timing and positioning so that his gospel might be preached. That's all this is, my friends. We are here to promote Jesus Christ and to prophesy upon the nation that judgment is coming. The time of the Lord is at hand. One day, our buildings, our homes, our streets will be turned to rubble and ashes. Fire will fall from the sky. America, we have separated ourselves. We have separated ourselves. It doesn't matter if you're on Trump's side or on Biden's side. We are human beings. We are flesh and bone. We all bleed the same red. And Jesus Christ loves you. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Hear the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be exalted. Every mountain and high hill be made low. Let the crooked places be made straight. Hey, hey, the places hey make sure they the take their items with them. If they have them, make sure we push them back. Take your Start moving back. Grab all your stuff. I'm going to walk with you again, all right? Do not trip. Put my finger on it. Jesus Christ is king. Keep going back. Keep going back. Keep going back. Leave your stuff! Hey. Leave your stuff! Drop Get your back! Go! Back! 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 Back!
feel like God had put on my heart that life as we know it for Christians is going to change in the future. I do not believe, I want to be clear, I do not believe that America will ever return to the Lord in, in a mass way. I do hope that we'll have pockets of revival, we can have some spiritual awakening, but I do believe that judgment is at the door for the United States. Excuse me, back. Keep going back. Back up a little more. As I'm standing there, unable to move for, I would say, around 45 minutes, I was contemplating many things. And uh, Christina and this gentleman, Jorge, a brother in Christ I met today, uh, they both took turns speaking. They both were able to share uh, their faith and uh, be able to stand strong for Jesus. I commend them for their, their strength. Today is a day of salvation. America needs to repent. Today is the day of salvation. Help your church to rise up. Give us boldness. The Father. time is now. The time is now. Father. Call upon the name of Jesus before it's too late. Jesus. Call upon the name of Jesus. Give us your peace. Call upon the name of Jesus. Give us peace, Father. Out your spirit, Father, and forgive us. Call upon forgive the name them. of they Jesus. They don't know what they're doing, and this does not make sense to the world. Father, we humble ourselves before you. Call you. Pour out your spirit and wake. Arise, O sleeper, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Father, or Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And uh, we sang, we sang Amazing Grace and God Bless America and I think they even tried to sing the Star Spangled Banner. I tuned out at that point because I was too worried about Jorge on his phone. I was, eventually I was told that there were two snipers trained in on me and uh, it's a scary prospect to know that if you do anything wrong, your, your life could end so quickly. So I want to talk to you real quick. Are you with this guy over here? What's the deal? Uh, I'll speak to you. Why do you dump stuff on himself? What is it? Ashes of what? I don't, yeah, I get that, but I'm trying to see, you, you realize well, this is a suspicious incident, right? It's a little weird when someone dumps answers on themselves. Not, man, Did you your, get that? What's your name? I'm Krista. Krista. It's nice to meet you. Nice what's to your meet name? you too. My name is Alex. Let okay. me, you asked me a question, let me explain. Sure, go ahead and explain. Okay. You realize you ask, this is a problem right now, right? Again, are you going to let me explain? I'm going to let you explain. Okay, let me say something. Go right for it. Number one, we have freedom of speech in this country you still. You sure do. You do. That's number one. Uh, you do. Number two, I'm an American citizen. That's fabulous. I, I am too. Okay. Number but three. Do you understand why we're concerned? You're not going to let me explain. I, I'm not. Because right now, so you're not going to speak at all. Are you going to let me explain? Go for it. Okay, then let me explain. Krista? Go. Okay. If you've never read in the Bible, which I can, I can tell you you haven't. Okay. Okay. There was, there's an act of repentance that was done. Okay, so you're okay. with this guy right there's here, an, right? Okay, you're not going to explain. I'm not going to listen to you. Okay. I mean, 
Look, if you're going to ask me questions, then let me say No, because I'm asking you why you're here. I'm, and I'm trying and why to explain you're and, and I'm trying to explain you don't get the I'm sorry, I didn't see you. you don't understand that? No, you again, understand why it's causing Krista. a bit of a, an issue right I understand. now? I understand. Okay. But again, when you ask me a question, I want to explain. I want to explain and then you, and then what he's doing right now. And then you cut me off. And you're with him. You're cutting me off. So why is he doing this? Again, there's an act in the Bible that prophets would do okay. to um, make a display of repentance, which is a good thing. That means turning away from things that are bad okay. and turning to God and following God's laws. And prophets would do that to uh, the there nations. He, like, let me ask you this. Is there a reason he's doing this right here? Absolutely. What is the reason? Well, it's, it's the symbolism that America okay. needs to turn from sin, turn to God. Okay. While there's still time, that God may hear the cries of this nation, that this that God may restore the nation to law and order. We are about law and order. Okay, that's, okay? that's, we're, that's we're, great. We're not about... My issue is I don't want him to be a danger to himself or someone else. Sure. Does and that make I, sense? And I, I understand you may not know what's happening. I understand that. But, but what I'm telling you is that there's nothing that he's doing. I don't think uh, there that, is. That is a threat to to, to I'm this just making sure that you. he's not a danger to himself. He's not a danger or to the himself. people in the area. He, it looks crazy. I, I get that. But Christians look crazy to people. We say some crazy things that sounds crazy to people. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. Those that are perishing don't understand the message of the cross. Okay. Okay? But the cross it, it, but it's the power of God unto salvation. For all who believe. Okay. And so the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it's the power of God unto salvation. Okay. Okay. And what, what we're displaying is that this nation is at a critical point, and I get what you're doing. This is no, by no means any threat to anybody, but this is an urgent no, message now it's my to turn get to right talk. with God. But you do understand the response when someone dumps powder on themselves. It's not powder. We don't know what it is. We're not with you. Well, you asked me, and I'm telling you what it is. So my job is to make sure it's not a harm to the folks in this area. I understand that. Or him. Sure, no problem. That's it. Completely understand. So that's so all I wanted to check on, make sure it wasn't something dangerous that you knew since I know that you were traveling within this location. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it's ashes. Okay, so, great. Yeah. preaching repentance uh, and I hope that these officers just realize that nothing is what we're doing is wrong and um, we know that the enemy will try to hinder us from doing God's will um, just pray for us that, uh, um, that the message just across to this nation and that's the main objective for God's will um, How come he get to stand over there and say that? But how could we live in an amazing country? You know what's saying? With so many opportunities, so many freedoms. We take advantage of these things. We want to be rebellious. God has not called us to be rebellious. When Jesus Christ was on this earth, yes. the Jews were waiting for a call to be king. The Jews were waiting for someone to come in and overthrow the government. But Jesus has to come to the government. It's not that we have a place to do this. It's not that we have a place to do this. It's not that we have a place to do this.
folks, we still want you out on the street at least in case we need to get a vehicle through here. So on the sidewalk or on that grass. Both myself and brother Philip, we said, okay, we're ready to leave. Whenever you're ready to let us leave, um, we kept our hands in the air. Um, we did not move. We were scared to move. Thank you. After what seemed like eternity, uh, this woman, she comes out and she, she approaches me and she tells me that she's going to take me through a series of questions. She wanted to check me out. She's the bomb squad commander for uh, maybe Capitol Police. And she made a determination on her own. She said, instead of sending out dogs and robots, uh, I felt as though if you were gonna do something, you would have already done it. And uh, I know what ashes look like, because she has a Catholic background. So she felt like it was uh, safe enough for her to make a, a bold move. It was very risky for her. She eventually explained to me she was just as afraid as I was. Um, we're all just trying to do our job. I'm trying to obey my God, and she's trying to make sure everybody gets home safe. It's just you can feel in the environment uh, the tension, uh, either from the people or for the law enforcement or even the soldiers. Um, it really shows the spiritual nature of this country. Like, everyone's so on guard on everything right now. It's wild. Yeah. Hey, we know this from the Lord. As big as this is, we know this from the Lord. You know? <laughs> mujer en la zona de la izquierda que entiendo que en estos momentos se está manteniendo una conversación con este señor que se ha puesto a cantar el himno de los Estados Unidos. Ojalá, de verdad, estaba todo transcurriendo con, con total normalidad. Ojalá no, no ocurra nada. I think the most beautiful part of this entire testimony was the interaction I had with Kathleen. Because this woman, um, she could have done things so differently. But instead, she took me through a series of procedures where uh, I had my hands up. Uh, she had me slowly raised from my ankles all the way up, raised the sackcloth, showed nothing was underneath, held my hands up, got down on the ground, had my face on the asphalt, and uh, she checked me. Uh, she frisked my, my entire uh, person. She turned me over onto my back, did the same thing, and then she, she gave the, the clear sound uh, signal. Eventually, I was able to remove my sackcloth, but I, I, I was most definitely afraid in those moments uh, of doing something wrong. So uh, I'm not afraid what man can do to me. I'm not afraid of death. But I do, uh, I do know that there is an aspect of humanity that comes out of us in those moments. And I was telling these brothers uh, here just not uh, some minutes ago, I'm not afraid to die because of persecution, because of someone coming against me because of my faith. But I don't want to die to a misunderstanding. Where I'm standing in front of the Capitol building preaching repentance and sackcloth, they think I'm a you know, suicide bomber and I get shot with a sniper. I don't want that. Uh, so it's not a good way to, to leave this earth, but even in that moment, I considered, I said, maybe God's plan for me is I get taken out and, and it gets, it, you know, the whole world sees it so that you know, a multitude can come to the Lord. We consider all these, you know, all these options, possibilities. But this beautiful interaction I had with Kathleen, where she was just amazing. She was very patient with me. I was very patient with her. I was able to minister to her, give her a, a good testimony of the love of Jesus and what we're doing and the reason for what we're doing. 
she asked me about what is the purpose of your ministry? What exactly are you trying to do here? We explain we go to very dangerous areas all over the world. We help people. Uh, focused on the love and the gentleness and the goodness. She didn't need a hard message in that time. So we had a connection and uh, she told me, she said, thank you for what you're doing. We need more of that in this time. And, and we, were, we were connected in that moment, I truly believe. I'm never gonna forget that lady. In my mind, she saved my life today because it very easily could have ended differently. I think every single one of us in our group were convinced we were going to be arrested and questioned, interrogated, uh, end up on a watch list. I mean, a million possibilities run through your mind in these moments. And praise God, after all of this, because of respect, and if I could pass along one message to young preachers, young men of God who want to do what we do and serve the Lord and be obedient, in these moments, you don't defy authority, you don't rebel, just be respectful, show the love of God. And it was the love that we showed each other that got us out of the situation because it was her decision to arrest us or not. And I asked her, I said, have I committed a crime? She said, no, you haven't. And she's like, and you're right. We, you know, you've been very patient. You've been very cooperative. You've been very respectful. We have nothing on you. You've done nothing uh, illegal. So we have to let you go. Um, they could have made a different determination very easily though, based on suspicion and a lot of other aspects. So uh, incredible, incredible day. Wow, that was a huge sigh of relief. So um, praise God, we were brought safely out of that situation and that was the scariest situation I've ever been in and I know Brother Philip feels the same way. Um, I've been to war, you know, as, as a veteran and this was very scary. Bless the Lord. Um, oh Lord, we are, we are nothing, God. But Lord, you are everything. We thank you, oh God. I see a lot of people saying, well, who were you preaching to? There was nobody around. You know, they had evacuated the area. And in the live stream, what you can't see is there are a lot of soldiers around us that I know they could hear what we were saying. And I know that they were watching. You know, we had soldiers to our right. We had soldiers to our left. We had the media and, and our team was about a block away there. And we were, we were praying, we were singing, we were calling on people to repent. And um, I don't feel like this was fruitless. I feel that God is gonna bless this. And I am praying that this is the beginning of a revival, of a very mighty wind movement of the Spirit through the church. We are. Here we are. God is faithful though. Jesus is coming back. And um, please pray for us. Please pray for us. Pray that our, our ability to travel to the nations, to help the poor, and to, uh, to lead people to Jesus is not affected. Um, everything seems good though. Oh, we aren't ashamed. We're unafraid. God is faithful. Everyone was very nice, very helpful. I just want to give a shout out to the bomb squad commander. She was very, very helpful, uh, very nice lady. Um, couldn't ask for more. Very scary situation, but God showed his faithfulness. Philip, what do you have on you? Uh, yeah, it's Is just it ashes. ashes. Yeah, so I had sackcloth. I had the ashes. We put ashes on our head. And it's to symbolize repentance in the country, you know, that we need to repent, yeah, turn I, to the I'm Lord. I'm listening to you over there. What kind of ash? Like ashes? I like don't even know. One of the sisters in Christ brought it. Got it. I think just wood, uh, ash, wood, the wood, 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 you know, ashes wood. from burnt wood. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. So Philip Blair, Torch of Christ Ministries. Uh, we're gonna keep moving through the city. I'm gonna go take a shower. We're gonna change clothes. We're gonna take the speaker. Go somewhere else. Preach. We are human beings. A lot of people see us on YouTube, they see us on these videos doing things that maybe seem larger than life, but you know, just as the people in the Bible were just humans, they made mistakes, uh, we're here, we're human, and we experience real emotions. How amazing it is that God puts us in position, though. I want to explain to you, just earlier, 
as we were getting ready to preach the gospel uh, in McPherson Square, we were there on the corner in sackcloth right as i began to preach i had no idea but they actually drove the motorcade through while we were preaching we were able to see uh joe biden and the first lady or whoever i don't know what they're all called but uh harris and biden and their family drive through while we're preaching god puts us in position he confirms his will we're here we're alive everything's good there's no charges we had no in ill intent so everything's good um anyway keep following subscribe if you're not and i'll see you in the next video I don't know yet how to feel uh, about the fear that I had in those moments, contemplating my own life. Was I prepared to die? I admit, I did pray. I said, God, I don't want to die. Please don't let me die today, because I feel as though I have a lot of work to do for the Lord. But God's will be done, and, and I do feel as though I came to peace with God in those moments. I was repenting. I said, God, if, if it's time for me to see you now, uh, I want to be ready. I want to make sure uh, that I am with you. So we had some moments together, humbling experience, sorting out my emotions still. Uh, Derek Jorge, because you had the crazy signs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought that too. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, that's probably like the only reason why you, they let you stay there. <laughs> yeah, I guess. God wanted me to be there. Because they knew. There's no other reason. God wanted me to be there, and that's why they let me stay there. God is in control, guys. This is all for His glory. He knows exactly what He's doing. He knows exactly what He's doing. Love you. That's why I'm here. I appreciate you being here. So many things God has for His children. So many blessings. So many. God wants to raise up an army in this time. We have to be prepared to lead from the front, to do the things that no one else wants to do, go to places no one else wants to go to, and say those things that are oftentimes very difficult. And who knows, God will take you to the ends of the earth, He'll take you to the Capitol on Inauguration Day, and He might even have you on your face. Uh, one way or the other, He'll get us on our face. And what a humbling experience. Once again, God showed his immense faithfulness to us. I give him all the glory.